Today we're talking T3, T4s, or in the mockery way that we actually refer to them on our group, on the Garrett group and uh, the uh, WhatsApp groups, we have a T3, T4, which is a, <laughs> a bit of an accent we use to insult the product. But be that as it may, the reason we do that is because the only T3, T4, T3, T4 that is left is a Chinese aftermarket or a knockoff of the original thing. You can't buy a genuine Garrett T3, T4 anymore, not unless it's actually built by hand using genuine parts, which obviously is uh, not very popular anymore since the GT series, the G series, GTX series type turbochargers have hit the, hit the market. But let's talk about a T3, T4. Often we get phone calls from customers saying, hi there, please can I, give, please can I have a price on a T3, T4 turbo? That's like phoning BMW and saying, hi there, can I have a price on a BMW? Which one? Now, the response by the client would normally be, well, I want a, a M57 trim 57, or an M12 trim 57, or I'm looking for an M24 trim 57. Okay, no idea what that is. Uh, I know how to work out trims of either the turbine and or the compressor, but there's no such thing as a T3, T4 trim 57. That is a name given by the knockoff manufacturers. Now, I don't know if this is uh, applicable around the world, but in South Africa, it's very, very applicable. So you'll phone one of the Chinese importers and you will ask for an M24 Trim 57 T3 T4, and they will have something off the shelf. Let me give you guys some insight into the world of the T3 T4. Now, <laughs> Yes, these are all T3 and T4 combinations. Which one? I can build you more than 350 different variants of a T3, T4 turbocharger with all the housing options, all the turbine shaft options, all the compressor wheel options, all the back plate options, etc, etc. Now, I'm going to touch briefly on the subject just to get you guys up to speed so you can understand exactly what a T3, T4 is. Now, in the, in the olden days, before the GT series and the ball bearing turbos and the performance range of turbos actually became a phenomenon and where the, uh, the manufacturers like Garrett and Borg Warner etc. started giving a lot of attention to the performance range of turbos and they started spending time designing aerodynamic designs, uh, developing relationships in terms of sizes of compressor wheel and turbine wheel combinations, they had no other options. Now, we, as the performance guys, back in the 90s, including myself, started playing around with T3 and T4 combination turbos to give you the best of both worlds. T3 turbine side to give you the best spooler possible, and a T4 larger compressor side to give you the high flow, high power characteristics. But there's a lot of science behind it. Yes, there's been a lot of mixing and matching and trials and errors, etc. And obviously the bearing systems failed and etc. etc. We'll get into that at a later stage. But let's go into how many options and how many different variants there are of T3 T4s. Let's have a look here. So, first of all, we have one of the families of T3 turbine wheels. Part number 451314-0501. That is known as a T3 stage one turbine wheel. There it is. This is a wheel that has got a specific number of blades, 11 blades, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 blades. It does not have a cut back on the extrusive blades. It is, if you hold the thing up like an ice cream cone, it is level with the ground, it is horizontal, no cutback. It has got quite a severe or quite a serious radius profile and the inducer blade sticks quite far into the uh, gas path as we term it inside of the uh, turbine housing. So this is one of very, very, a very, very large range of turbine wheels. Let's have a look at the dash two, 451314-0502, stage two. All of a sudden, you have a slight cutback on this blade. Your inducer 
is the same size diameter wise if you can see this more or less with the eye as the stage one but look at the tip height i'm going to put the blades together the tip height on the stage one is higher than the stage two the ex-juicer is larger it has a cutback the radius profile is different the dimensions from the back of the turbine wheel to the neck and from the neck to the shoulder and from the shoulder to the end of the thread is the same and it fits a certain family range of bearing housings. Then you get a different part number T3 shaft with obviously a different number of blades and a totally different design turbine head with different dimensions. Same diameter shaft but a different length. It uses a different bearing housing, still T3. It uses the same journal bearing diameters, thrust bearing assembly, but the split seal ring might differ. The, 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 um, the air oil separator groove inside the shaft is located in a different position and the heat shield is a different size. So that is a stage two, right? Let's move on. Then we have a stage three. These are all brand new shafts. We use these to rebuild a lot of the diesel agricultural applications, uh, which are still out there in the market. And um, just open this up. We are able to, we do have the ability to build T3, T4s, genuine Garrett T3, T4s. We have the knowledge and we have the expertise to be able to understand what relationships exist between turbine and compressor, what works, what doesn't, what is going to compromise the bearing system specifically and more specifically the thrust assembly and what won't in terms of thrust loading. There is a totally different size once again, full height blade, and quite a severe radius profile, inducer size once again, different. So that is the dash three or stage three. Then we've got another part number, also T3 shaft, 451310-0506. You get an 0501, 0502, 0503, 0504, 056, etc. And it goes quite high. Totally different design, different number of blades, 10 blade and you have a severe, quite a severe cutback, different size exducer, different size inducer, same dimensions from the back of the disc to the shoulder, shoulder to neck, neck to the end of the shaft. Same diameter shaft, same journal bearing, same repair kit, and, 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 and. These fit into these bearing housings. This is a T3 slash T4, TO4, TO4B, TO4E, TBP4, etc., etc. There are many families of T3 and slash or T4 bearing housings. This is a 43027 25. It has got a 1.32 millimeter oil gallery inside. Then you get a dash 55, which has got a 0.8 millimeter gallery inside. Then you get a lot more numbers. There's approximately 30 variants that look identical to this bearing housing. The same flange face, the same flange face, oil inlet and outlet, identical dimensions. However, the internals are totally different. Some take a dynamic journal bearing, some take a carbon type journal bearing. There are a lot of different variants in terms of the bearing housing internal structure depending on the bearing system, the design, the application and part number combination of T3 or T4 family components for the OEM application. Let's move on to the back plates. I've only got two of probably 35 different back plates that are available. Look at the part number, 409629-8 and dash six. There's a very slight dimensional difference here. However, there's a difference nonetheless. Those alone just the, the, the total number of shafts of which is probably about 15 or 18 t3 families 35 back plates approximately 30 different bearing housings do the math you well over hundreds of different combinations just on the turbine side now on the repair kit side of things or the bearing system side of things you get a 270 degree and a 360 degree then you get a 270 degree that bolts down into the back into the uh, bearing housing where you do not have any little holes that you can notice on this specific bearing housing with thread in that actually bolts the thrust bearing down other bearing housings you do then you get a 360 degree thrust bearing i'll go into that now when i strip this turbo no it's not a gtx 
So we'll go into that just now. And let's move on. So now we're talking about the compressor stage. This is where it gets exciting because this is where the airflow comes from. You get different compressor housings. Now on this table here, it doesn't look like much, but all of these compressor housings on the table that you see here are T4 compressor housings. Every single one is a T4 compressor housing with different flange faces, different ARs, and different part numbers. Some of them, most of them are different castings as well. Now you get on the T4 family compressor stage, T04B, T04E, TBP4, and then you get the range of T04-55, T04-56, T04-66, etc., etc. Those are all totally different compressor housings, both in the castings, both in the ARs of each of those housings, and many other aspects. Let's start off here. This here is a T04B family compressor housing. It is an AR60, an AR60, which you should see cast on the inside over there, in there, I don't know if you can see that. Have a look at the outlet port. It's quite small, isn't it? This is a T04B, just like that one, compressor housing. I'm not going to mention part numbers here, too much information. And it is also an AR.60 compressor housing, same family, different casting. Look at the outlet. Look at the outlet. Totally different compressor housing. This specific unit fits one of the T4 eight blade splitter wheels, which I'll get into just now, and I'll show you the actual wheel that fits inside here. Then we have, anybody recognize this? GTX 2867R, Gen 2, compressor housing. T04B, AR.60. This is a ported shroud. Once again, identical family, different casting. It's got a speed sensor port in it. There's the speed sensor port over there. So, and part numbers, etc. So, out of these T04B housings, all of them are AR60s. Every single one of them is different. So, which combination T3, T4? You're getting the, me you're getting the message, guys. Let's move on. Here's a T04E family to, uh, compressor housing which in this specific case is, once again, AR60. But hold on a second. AR60. Look at the size of the scroll, the volute of these housings. They're both AR60s. They're both T4s. Which T4? T04B, T04E. The specific unit comes off a GTX 3071, Gen 1, Portage Shroud, Looks exactly like that on the inside. Then we have another T04B, also AR60. This has been cut off. We've just dissected these so that the guys can understand for training purposes how the Porter Shroud works. Next video. Runs the GTX 3076 Gen 1. The only difference is same casting, larger compressor inducer, slightly different radius profile. The rest is the same. Then we get a T04E. AR70 compressor housing and another T04E AR70 compressor housing. They're different. You won't notice it just looking at it. I'll show you the difference just now. They are different. And another T04E AR70 compressor housing. Also known as an M24 which is a casting number. It has absolutely nothing to do with the identification of this specific housing because we have another housing from a GT45 family with an M24 on it as well and an AR rating of 66. 
totally different casting, totally different size, also M24. So when somebody tells you they're running an M24 trim 57 turbine or turbocharger, you don't know much about turbos, guys. Then we have another TO4E AR70 compressor housing, portage shroud, EC1, M24. So all of these houses are different. Let me prove it to you. Here is a Chinese copy of a 60-1 compressor wheel. It don't fit. Next housing. It don't fit. Can't fit. Next housing. Ah, voila. It fits. Okay. Next housing. Don't fit. Which T3, T4 would you like, sir? Let's carry on. T3, T4s on the compressor stage have got probably 350, 400, maybe even 500 at a stretch. Different compressor wheel variations. Have a look here. We have this. Let me just take one of these T3 shafts that we had earlier. Yes, the compressor wheel fits on. It's a T4 compressor wheel. Fits onto the shaft. Look at the part number, 446279-1. Six blade wheel, specific inducer, exducer, and tip height. This is a very large tip height compressor wheel. Then we have 442293-9, a different part number. Also a T T4 wheel, different number of uh, same number of blades, different inducer, different exducer, much thinner tip height. Then we have a 442-476-11. It's on the shaft. Another combination. Look at how serious the cutback is on those blades. Yes, it's also six blade. Different inducer, different exducer, very aggressive uh, radius profile, very high tip height. Then we have a 409-179-19. By the way, that starts at a, at a, a 001, and it goes right up to a 0036. Here's the 0031, and 26, and 25, and 24, etc., etc., etc. So just in the one family, this is what we term an eight-blade splitter, and this should be the family of wheels. Indeed it is. That fits inside of the very first TO4B compressor housing that I showed you. There it is. That's the wheel, eight blade splitter, eight main blades and eight splitter blades that fits into that specific housing. Let's take the dash 24. So this is the 19, this is the dash 24. Different size inducer, same size exducer, different size tip height, different radius profile, different application, different flow rates. Have a look here, where's that shaft? Slides onto the shaft. Next combination. Next combination. Next combination. Next combination. And yet another, another combination. 408, 409, 826 6. Right, so then we have another wheel, which is a 409, 826 15. Have a look at the design of this wheel. This has got a six blade wheel, 58 inducer, 69 exducer, half flow wheel, great wheel, no cutback on the blades, no high cycle fatigue combat for this guy, proven. So which combination would you like? We have approximately 150 different TO4B and E and B, T, TO4, P, uh, TO4 BP wheels in stock. We can build a combination of any one of these shafts with any one of those wheels. Now let's talk about combinations real quick. A lot of the people have got this idea in mind. Use the smallest wheel in the smallest turbine housing to get the best boost response, but I'll put a massive wheel, yes this is an exaggeration, onto the other end of it. Because I'm gonna get massive flow. First of all, the turbine will never be able to drive the compressor. And second of all, if it is managed, if this combination manages to get up to speed, which it won't, but let's talk a little bit more realistic, 
Uh, let's take this guy for example. It's still a huge mismatch. If this was to work, and let's say for example you could get this to boost about 1 bar, 1.2 bar, the thrust bearing in this bearing system would fail because you will overpower the thrust from the compressor side. So it is absolutely key to understand how the relationships work on a T3, T4, if you were going to build one, if you still wanted to build one. So there, therein lies the problem. I'll have another video which explains how to calculate trims. Uh, it'll be about a three minute video. This is quite a long video, but there's a lot to cover. So we'll do that in the next video. Okay, let's strip this rotating assembly over here, which I told you earlier on was not a GTX, however, it's got a GTX wheel on it. We keep this for training uh, purposes, just to disassemble and assemble again. It's got, this, this is a Chinese aftermarket copy of a GTX something something. The sizes are all mismatch, uh, they're totally incorrect. Turbine wheel, I'll, I'll, that's for another video to identify and see how these things actually, how to identify these uh, copies. But um, let's disassemble this. I want to go into the thrust bearing to show you guys how the thrust assembly works inside a journal bearing turbocharger, which I touched on briefly uh, earlier. So let's just grab the compressor, turbine. This is just assembled loosely, hasn't been bolted down. Um, compressor wheel comes off. Keep the nut on top there. Let's knock. Put the back plate down, everything's just come out. Knock the shaft out. The shaft down, heat shield, journal bearing. Right, the most important part here that I want to just go over to you guys is the thrust assembly. You can see this is a cheap Chinese knockoff. It's been spark eroded, it hasn't been CNC machined. They've used powder metallurgy. Next video, we'll do that, we'll go into that. But have a look at this. It's got three holes right through, and it's got two slightly smaller holes. Now, if you look at the bearing housing, compared to this bearing housing, which we showed in the video earlier, uh, let's turn it around so the orientation is the same. This is just some sticky oil residue that was uh, stuck between the plastic packet that I was in and uh, the bearing housing. You have this thrust bearing. There's your two locator pins which should locate in those two smaller holes. That is the orientation of the bearing and that's how it fits. Okay, let's do the same thing on this one. Uh, okay, well, one is a genuine bearing housing and one is not. So we are battling to get these little locators into the thrust bearing, but you get the idea. That is the orientation that it's supposed to fit in. Now, there's three additional holes, and there are none on this bearing housing. I spoke to you about screwing down, bolting down the thrust assembly. You can actually see a witness mark there, there and there, the shiny little areas where the bolt heads were, which hold this thrust bearing down into the bearing housing. Orientation is as such. Journal bearing on the compressor side goes there. Your thrust spacer, your thrust bearing with your pads. There's your pads for the turbine side thrust face. There's the pads for the compressor side thrust face. That fits and locates on like that. You have a little o-ring that goes in there, which I'll keep out for now. It's going to bother us. You have a back plate. You have a thrust collar or otherwise known as an oil slinger with all of the holes and you have a split seal ring over there which seals on the inside face of the back plate. This guy sits like that. Now I'm going to take all of these components out and I'm going to hold them up for you to show you how they actually work. So there's your spacer, thrust bearing in the middle, collar on the other side. Now when you hold these together you can squeeze this as hard as you want there's clearance. I don't know if you can hear that. There's clearance between the thrust bearing and the, the bearing faces and the collar and spacer. Specifically, it doesn't matter how hard you compress that. Specifically to allow oil to get through. Now, when the turbine starts to thrust or when you have an oversize or a mismatch, let me actually build this quickly so you guys can get a better understanding. Once again, this is an exaggeration but it's there just for illustration purposes. That is how the assembly goes together. This turbocharger, should it be able to 
pick up and boost, let's say one bar, whatever the case is, or two bar, one and a half bar, the thrust bearing will fail on this side of the thrust face because the thrust loading from this oversized compressor wheel in relation to the smaller turbine will outweigh the acting force coming from the turbine side. T3, T4s, when they fail, 99% of the time it's a thrust failure because they're a mismatch. So, compressor wheel thrust in that direction, turbine wheel thrust in that direction, and you are thrusting these steel components up against those little faces over there and that little face over there. So T3, T4s, be very careful about the relationship, the size, the combination used between compressor and turbine. I want to talk to you about turbine housings now. These are all T3 turbine housings. Here is a turbine housing T3 because of the flange over here and because of the family of the volute. This is a T3 AR.48 turbine housing. T3 in, four bolt out. There's the AR over there. It's a genuine Garrett. Then we have another T3, four bolt out. AR.63 turbine housing. Look at the volute size. Okay, same family, all right? Then we have another T3. Yes, it's got a V-band out. T3 in. 0.63. You'll see the casting in there. AR 0.63. And this fits the GT and GTX 3582R, GT 3584RS. All those blades will fit inside of this housing. It's still a T3 family housing. Then we have another T3 family housing, AR61, which also fits the GT slash GTX 3582, 3584 size blades, but it's V-band in, V-band out. So which T3, T4 combination are you looking for? There's no such thing as an M24 trim 57. Trim what? Trim on the turbine side or trim on the compressor side? It's an open-ended question, rhetorical question, trick question, label it as you wish. T3, T4s are very, very complicated. If somebody is selling you a specific T3, T4 with a specific combination, talk to experts, talk to people who actually know how to calculate these things, understand the relationships, and are able to be able to flow, test, and verify what sort of thrust loading uh, um, each end actually has. If the AR of the turbine housing in relation to the turbine wheel that you're using is actually correct in terms of the back pressures, Ask for graphs, turbine graphs, compressor maps, and see whether or not there is actually a workable relationship in the, in the combination that you're trying to build for your vehicle, for the boost response you're looking for, the size of the engine, compression ratio, fuel, boost level, and, and obviously power output. So speak to us. We have this knowledge. We're free with this knowledge. We're only ha too happy to help you guys. Don't get caught out by buying an M24 T3 T4 from 57. I hope it's been educational, guys. Um, it's a very, very vast subject. I don't want to go too much detail into the subject, but I hope it's helped. And uh, look out for the next video about how to understand and calculate trims, both on the compressor and the turbine side. Please subscribe, please like. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down, whatever. But let us know how you feel. If there are any questions, if there's anything you want to know, ask in the comment section below. Interact with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.